Education means the knowledge and development resulting in the process of being educated. Education means the knowledge and development resulting from the process of being educated. Being educated means giving evidence to training or practice. Praise the Lord. So education can be in any area of life, right? Because education means what? The knowledge and development that results from the process of being educated. So now you are in school and you are learning, right? Every day you go to, not every day, Monday to Friday you go to school because you want to learn and you want to be what? You want to turn out to be great in life, right? That is the process of being educated. When you come to church every on Sundays, what message is it? When you come to church on Sundays, and whenever you go to church, just like you are here right now in this church for one and two days, you are getting education because you are learning something, praise God, and you are developing. So education is not only for school, because I know that when we hear education, we are thinking that, oh, we are going to school, education, education. Education is for different areas of life. And also, you know, for marriage, if you are talking about education, it means that you are listening to marriage counselors, first the living Jesus. How many of us know marriage counselors? You know marriage counselors. You have never heard about people that you call marriage counselors before. You have never heard of people. People that teach about marriage. Let me just say that people that teach about marriage. Thank you very much for me. Thank you for bringing me out to you. So that those people that keep on just saying something that somebody has made before. Thank you. <laughs> so yes. So we have for marriage. We have marriage counselors. We have people that teach about marriage for your spirituality, if you want to be educated, if you want to learn, first living Jesus, you can read your Bible, go to church and practice what you learn. Go to church and practice what you learn. I noticed something when the first session was going, a lot of us were not writing. Just a few of us were writing. So if you don't write, how do you want to remember what you learn? How do you want to remember what you learn? Even before you learn talking about practicing it. That's why you go to school with book. Praise the Lord. And you write the exams. So because you don't have to write, have to write exams quarterly or maybe after every day or there's no term in church. It's not when you go to church and then you go without writing and then you carry the Bible or you don't carry the Bible anymore. What do you want to do? You know that's the same. And don't let me enter into this. <laughs> you carry the Bible or you don't carry the Bible and you're back. And let's, 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 let's end that today. Are we agreeing that it ends today? Are we agreeing that it ends today? Now, whenever you go to church, whenever you carry your Bible to me, very much in the ocean, you are going to have your book and your pen so that you can take notes, you can write what you learned. Praise the Lord. Somebody is shaking my head. Why are you shaking your head? Praise the Lord. So, um, moving on to going through the process and getting education. We all know that education is a process. You start from when you are a child. When you're in kindergarten and then you go to, um, after kindergarten, you go to nursery school. After nursery school, it's primary school, then university, and then after university, you can have a master's education, first of all. So it's a process. You cannot, they cannot give you a child and tell you that I want to go to university school. I want to go to university school. Is it possible? No, no. It's not possible. The child has to go through a process. So getting educated involves a process. First of all, and there is one thing that is primarily important in getting educated and acquiring knowledge about any area of life. You know, when I started, I mentioned that education is not just for school. First of all, and that's one of the things we say in modern movies that aside from formal education, there's also the need for children, for teenagers, for young adults to be educated in the matters of sexual purity, what sexual purity means. First of all, the scripture says that train of the child is there to go, and when you go, you will not depart from it. First of all, so if you train the child and then let them know what sexual purity means, when they go, they can always say that, okay, this is what I know, and this is why I will not do what you are asking me to do, that is against the will of God. Do you understand? So there's one thing that is primarily important when it comes to acquiring knowledge or getting educated in all areas of life. First of all, because we have agreed that education is not just for one year, it's not just because you want to become a doctor or a technologist or a labor artist. Education is for every area of your life, anything at all that you want to consider. And the one thing that is very important, I'm saying for the fourth time, so I expect that by the time I finish this lesson, if I'm asking you, you will remember. Praise the God.
the one thing that is primarily important is the Bible, the Word of God. Praise the Lord. The Word of God that is written, that's your Bible. If you have a Bible here, when you see that people that don't come with their Bible, you know that they are missing out on something. If you have your Bible here, when you are waiting for your smile, if they are smiling at their way because they are not being like you. <laughs> okay, the Word of God that is written, that's the Bible, and that is spoken. The Word of God that is spoken, like you hear through the voice of the Holy Spirit. When, we, when the first speaker was speaking, she mentioned that um, we need to be able to hear God, that she has always heard God concerning every area of our life. So the Word of God that is written in the Bible, the Word of God that is spoken, when, when we hear from the Holy Spirit, how many of you can hear God? How many of you can hear God? If you hear God, wave your hand. If you have ever heard God speak to you, wave your hand. Okay, how many of you know that God speaks? Um, how many of you know that God speaks? That God speaks to us? How many of you know that God speaks? Okay, how many of you desire to hear God? You desire to hear God. And I pray that God is going to have a desire for Jesus' name. That you actually begin to hear God in Jesus' name. So there's the spoken word and there's the written word. The written word is the Bible. The spoken word is when you hear the voice of God in your ear. You can actually hear the voice of God loud and clear. We are speaking now. You can hear it loud and clear like that. Praise the Lord. And then you can hear the voice of God through people. When somebody comes, like I'm speaking to you right now. And I'm speaking to you and God is speaking to you. I'm not Words, they are the words of God. Praise the Lord. And that's you hearing the voice of God. You can hear the voice of God when you read your Bible. Praise the Lord. So if I say that you can hear the voice of God loud and clear when you are praying, for instance. So these things are important. It's important that you pray. It's important that you read your Bible. It's important that you enjoy meetings like this. Because these are the places where you can hear the voice of God. So why did I say that education is important? I want to because the word of God is our guide, praise the Lord. The word of God is our guide. That's why, that's why the word of God is what is very important when it comes to being educated in any area of our lives. Praise the Lord. The word of God is our guide. Um, Joshua, please read for us Psalm 119, verse 105. Psalm 119, verse 105. Everybody go to Psalm 119, verse 105. You are here with the Bible. That one more one night is one more five. If you are not here with that, just write it so that when you get home, you can read it. Some more one more night is one more five. Yes, no. What is the love of my feet and the light of my God? Praise the Lord. It says the word of God is the word that God is the light of my feet and the lamp. Ah, praise the Lord. So it means the word of God is a, is a, is a what? Um, Joshua, say it again, please. The word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my heart. Yes, the word is a lamp onto my feet and a light onto my heart. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The word of God is that light. When you know you're in a dark room and you cannot see anything, but when the light comes on, you are able to see right. So the word of God is that light that makes you to be able to see where you are going to see. Praise the Lord. So do you know why it's important? Why the word of God is very important when it comes to making decisions about getting educated in any area of your life? Because the word of God gives you light. Praise the Lord. When you are not sure and you are thinking, should I do this? Should I not do this? Um, these people are doing this, but I'm not sure if it's what I should do. The word of God is what guides you. Praise the Lord. And I'm not thinking about education because I'm thinking about making a career choice as well. Because after you get educated, you intend to use your education for something like right? praise the Lord. So the next reason why the next reason that um, education is important, why the word of God is very important when it comes to getting educated in any area of life, is that there is time for everything. There is time for everything. Someone needs to go to a university. Praise the Lord. For everything there is time. Praise the Lord. There's a season and a time for everything. There's time for everything. So remember that when we started, I mentioned that 
there's a nation that to get educated in any area of our life or anything that you want to do, anything at all that you want to get your spirituality, because that's another education on its own. To the school, there's something called the school of the spirit. Whether it's a um, relationship, whatever it is that you want to get educated for, the word of God is very important and there's time for everything. So, if there's time for everything, it means that there are some signs that are more the time for some things, right? What do you want to do? I said that if there's time for everything, it means that there are some signs that are not the time for some things, right? So it means that as much as you want to get educated and you want to say that, okay, I want to be good with this, I want to know how to do makeup, I want to, I want to know how to make hair, I want to, there's time for everything. You may not be able to do everything at once. Praise the Lord. There's time for everything. There's time to be in a relationship. There's time for everything. And so the word of God is what is going to guide you and help you when to do what. Praise the Lord. Because God speaks to you, just as I'm speaking to you right now, God speaks to you. And He can guide you on when to do and what to do, how to do, when to do it, what time to do it. Praise the Lord. And I pray that you're going to get into that realm in the name of Jesus. So in order to avoid being a victim of circumstances, our next point offers us an answer. Praise the Lord. And what is our next point? We need guidance because we already mentioned that there's time for everything. You can want to be a makeup artist, you want to be a doctor, you want to be in a relationship, you want to grow your spirituality, you want to do everything all at once. But there's time for everything. There's a way that that's why we have money. We have afternoon and we have giving. Praise the Lord. More than afternoon and giving at the same time. Praise the Lord. So there's a time for everything. There's order for everything. And the word of God is what offers us that order. But then number three says we need guidance. Let's open our Bible. Somebody open to Ephesians 6, verse 2 to 3. Ephesians 6, verse 2 to 3. Another verse is 2 Chronicles. Okay, let's read Ephesians 6, verse 2 to 3. There is somebody very fast. Ephesians 6, verse 2 to 3. What we're talking about? The fact that we need guidance. Ephesians 6, verse 2 to 3. Honor thy father and thy mother. Honor thy father and thy mother. Praise the Lord. Read it in the Which is the first commandment of promise? That it will be born with thee, and thou mayest be well with thee. That it will be well with thee, and thou mayest be well with thee. Amen. 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 It will be well with us. It will be well with us. It will be well with us. And we will live long on earth. So what should we do? Ah. It should be well with us. Yeah. And we will live long on earth. Yeah. So what should we do? Yeah. Praise the Lord. You should honor our father and our mother. And if you are honoring your father and your mother, it means that you are going to obey them. You will respect them. We are not disobedient to them. We are not disobedient to them. Praise the Lord. And this is how they guide you. And you tell you, don't do this in this time. Don't go to this place. Do this one. Praise the Lord. So honor your father and your mother. Don't so be disobedient. First, believe in Jesus. Let's go to Second Chronicles 20, verse 20. Somebody, Second Chronicles 20, verse 20. And they wrote them in the morning and went out to the wilderness. To the wilderness of the poor. And as they went out, they were passing and said, Hear me, do that to me in the house of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God and you will be established in the prophet and you succeed. Praise the Lord. Believe in the word of God and you will be established. Believe in the prophet and you will what? You will prosper. So number two, submit to your prophet. Submit to your prophet. The dictionary defines the prophet as a person regarded as an inspired teacher or proclaimer of the will of God. Somebody that teaches about the will of God or that proclaims the will of God. So your prophet will be your pastor or your spiritual parent or leader or your spiritual leader. Praise the living Jesus. So submit to your prophet. Whatever your prophet says, you should obey them. Do you understand? And respect them and let them guide you concerning making decisions because there's time for everything. And education is important if you want to excel in any level of life at all. Praise the Lord. 